Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to share with you guys my top 5 favorite things about the Hydrogen One. Regardless of some of the downfalls and the shortcomings that came with this phone, there actually is some really good things in there that you can enjoy if you decide to pick up this phone. This is TK and I want to say thank you very much to Verizon for allowing me to check out the Hydrogen One, but let's not waste any time. Let me share with you guys my top 5 favorite things about this phone. is a free website builder service that offers you the opportunity to have a website built from zero to 100% in about two minutes by just answering seven simple questions. They utilize AI and they call it IDA. And this service actually is pretty cool. By just answering those seven questions, it gets you from zero to a full website ready for you to customize to your liking. You can even open up an online store. So let's start off the first thing that I really enjoyed about this device, and that's really the build quality of this phone. Uh, what I mean by that is it's actually built very solid. There's no question about that this is actually kind of built like a tank. The ridges that we have on the side here give us a really good grip. Uh, the fingerprint sensor that's placed right there gives us access directly into the power button as well. So you have the ability of unlocking it and turning on the screen at the same time. And speaking of that screen, it's a 5.7 inch QHD display. Uh, and it's basically a 4V or holographic display. Some of the things that are powering this device is the Snapdragon 835. Unfortunately, it's a couple of years old now, almost with the 855 out. Uh, but we have six gigs of RAMs and 4,500 million battery built in into the back. And they have the space for that, which is really nice. Um, now, as far as the actual uh, cameras that we have here, we have two front facing cameras and two back facing cameras, stereo copy cameras that will enable us to be able to not only shoot in regular 2D view and what they call 4V, which essentially is their holographic uh, technology. Uh, the display itself does flip between holographic and non-holographic. So an example would be if I jump into the camera. This is the camera right now in standard view and I can click the button and it jumps off and it becomes into four view. Now, unfortunately for you, you guys could see there's a little bit of a delay there when I move my hand on the camera and when I switch over, it changes the actual uh, kind of just the way it represents itself. But the way it works for us, at least when you're holding the phone, is you can actually see images pop out of the display, which is a really cool feature if you're looking for something like that out of your mobile phone. Now that's gonna segue me into the next thing that I really enjoyed about this is not just the fact that it does have the holographic technology, but it also has supporting technology that allow you to enjoy the technology. Because in general, when you're using the phone, the actual tech is not showing in 4V. It's standard 2D view. So the same way you see it on your normal smartphone, let's say uh, your tablet or whatever. But to be able to enjoy some of that content, you have a couple of options. You can either A, go into the camera and switch over 4V, and then you'll be able to see things like that. But not only that, you'll be able to also go into your gallery and start looking at some of those images that you created with it. Now, again, you can see this, the color shifting in color here, that, that way it looks, this is a 4V image. Uh, and if I switch it over to 2D, you'll see it stands out. And this is pretty much what you'd see if I shared this on social media which makes it a little bit frustrating because I can't share things to let's say Instagram or Twitter and share with you guys exactly how it feels or it looks like here. But I can do this and I can actually start swiping and I can take different images. Uh, and the main benefit of course, and here you can see this is an image of my son. And again, switch over, this is the 2D image. It's not a bad image, uh, but the 4V actually gives you a little bit more unique uh, uniqueness. And a lot of people that look at this are like, wow, it looks like he's just standing out outside of that image. So the background kind of just really, really good background separation. Uh, but the other thing that they also have, which is a really cool feature, is uh, this kind of like social network called Holopix. And Holopix allows you to share this content and enjoy looking at other people's creations using this technology. So it's kind of taken us away from standard normal, uh, you know, social media. But the really main benefit is that there is an existing ecosystem that helps to support the system and helps you enjoy what you got. And there's a lot of people in there and I've been sharing some stuff in there. And one of the, one of my favorite, favorite pictures is, and I'm trying to see if I can find it, uh, is essentially a picture of somebody taking a, a picture of a cup and there's water at the bottom of that. And you're able to see the, the three dimensional image in there. When you're looking down at it, you feel like the cup is coming out of the glass. And I shared that with a few friends. So definitely really nice. We have the uh, hydrogen network, which also allows us to watch movies that are, use this technology, which is really nice. And you're able to see some of their previews. Again, a limited selection, not a lot of movies, and I hope to see more things in there. That's one of the limitations. Uh, and of course, last but not least, it's also gaming using this technology as there isn't a lot of games that are taking full advantage of the actual system, meaning giving us that holographic. 
and one of them is obviously here asphalt and i'm able to play this game and again to you it looks more of a 2d image to me it, it does show the holographic uh, ui throughout the entire game so when you're playing a game or you're doing stuff it just adds into it and just makes it a little bit more unique and i feel like that's one of the really cool things about this it's the tech that is in there but not only that the supporting uh, ecosystem around it and i'm really hoping to see more accessories that utilize the backs oh pins here just so that we have more um, options as far as adding accessories and just using some of the benefits of what the modular system that red was trying to give us here so the next couple of things are kind of related to each other uh, the first thing is going to be the front facing stereo speakers and this is by far one of the best things you could do on a phone because of the fact that when we watch movies and we don't always watch movies listening with headphones we'll get to the headphone section uh, but we always you know watch movies let's say we go into YouTube you want to watch a video and in this situation I'm gonna to listen to this song this is just again for music purposes Having sound come at you as opposed to from the side or from the back or different combinations is definitely really well appreciated. We've seen this with gaming phones. We've seen this with the, obviously with the uh, Robin. We've seen this with, uh, of course, a Razer phone, even other gaming phones, a lot of the ROG phone. And I feel like this is always the best implementation. If you're going to have bezels, make them functional. That's the best way. Have the two cameras, have the speaker here, have the speaker here, and just give us really good audio. I wish the audio was a little bit louder, but definitely a really one of the more enjoyable things about this is watching movies, uh, watching content or consuming content on this, even if it's music. And one of the other texts that they do include in here is the ability of switching between regular and 3D sound. And I'm just going to show you guys exactly what it sounds like here between the two and flip back and forth. Personally, I prefer with it off, uh, but it is an option. It's, it seems more of like an EQ that's built in that uh, makes the sound, I guess, try to make it more surround as opposed to just coming from two front facing speakers in front of you. It works great. Um, and that takes me directly into the audio coming in from the headphone jack. It's a similar story. The fact of the matter is we have a headphone jack and that's something that's very unique in 2019. And of course, not even in, barely even in 2018. And the fact that the audio out of the headphone jack is actually pretty decent. Uh, but again, we are still kind of suffering with the same situation where we go into the actual audio and when we're playing music, any kind of music, even here, uh, the audio out of the headphone jack, for some reason, just gets worse when you turn on the 3D option. So I feel like if you're going to listen to music, recommendation is listen to music on this, enjoy it, either speakers or headphones, uh, and definitely just, you know, turn off the 3D aspect part of it and you'll be able to enjoy it quite well. Uh, I hope to see more and more functionalities added into this device so that we can take the benefit of all this, you know, ecosystem that they're trying to build on top of, you know, obviously Android here. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about is the granular configuration that we're able to do with the video options here that we have on this camera. Now, as I mentioned to you guys at the beginning, you are able to take 2D and 4V images with the front or the back facing sensor. That's the benefit here. And the images look great on the phone and you're able to share them on Holopix. And of course, if you share them on anything outside of that, it shares the 2D version of the image. So there's always a 2D and a 4V view of any image. But then when you switch over to video, so now we're in the video mode and we go into the actual settings tab. Uh, of course, as I showed you guys before in the first video, we have a lot of options here. We have the ability of obviously the ability of uh, customizing the playback level between 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. You're able to go in there and customize the front facing video, not only between H.264 and 265, which is great, but you can go up to 4K at 30 frames per second at 100 megabits on the front facing cameras, the same way with the back one. Of course, on the back one, you're able to go to four, uh, four, uh, with 2K at 60 frames per second, where you're only able to do 30. But again, the fact that we can go at this high of a resolution on the cameras on the front and the back, we're getting a much better experience. And again, this is the quality that you'd want to expect out of a camera that's made by RED. So let's go ahead and do a quick front facing and back facing sample. I'm going to be recording them both at 100 megabits. 
30 frames per second at 4K, keeping it at 264, mostly for compatibility issues, but uh, you'll get the chance to see it. And of course, I'm gonna downsize it to 1080p. We're starting off with the front-facing camera. This is a 4K video shot on the Red Hydrogen 1. Again, the capabilities of being able to shoot in 4K out of your front-facing camera makes this actually a pretty decent shooter in the front, so you don't actually have to always worry about switching your phone to the back, and you can see yourself in this image. Let's go ahead and switch over to the back-facing camera and see how the audio in the video performs there. Switching it over to the back-facing sensor, again, we're supposed to get the exact same quality of the image and the audio, either if we use the front or the back. The only drawback here is that I can't see myself while I'm recording this part. But again, with these set of cameras on both front and back, we should be able to get the exact same quality as far as audio and as well as video. So overall, to wrap up the Hydrogen One, it's a phone that had a big hype behind it and it didn't necessarily live up to that expectation. But I would say that if you're looking for a phone with a unique technology, like the holographic or the Hydrogen One phone, the holographic display, I think this phone does it and it does it well. Uh, it's not on all the time, so it's not always in your face, and you can turn it on when you need it, uh, depending if you, let's say, you're playing games, watching movies, or you want to take video or even images using the technology. Now, as far as sharing that, you're pretty much limited to Holopix, so that's kind of one kind of a limiting factor. But the fact of the matter is you do need a social network that is compatible with the tech. So if Instagram or Facebook or Twitter ever do decide to make it available, we should be able to share there. And hopefully at some point, you do need to still have a phone that actually is compatible with it. So that's also the limitation. But once you start sharing images and checking out what other people have been, have been able to do with this, you definitely appreciate the tech. So if you're looking for a phone that performs pretty well and it is actually pretty fast on the Verizon network, I think the Hydrogen One is a good option to consider. If you're not into the holographic display and all the tech that we're seeing here, or even the possible modularity that uh, well, Red that's offering us here, um, I think you can definitely check out other devices that Verizon has. And I think at that point, you'll be able to get something that fits your budget and your need. Uh, but the Red Hydrogen One has a lot of cool things going for it. I appreciate it. And I'm kind of sad as well that I have to return it at this point. But uh, like and subscribe as usual. Thank you very much to Verizon for allowing me to check out the Red Hydrogen One. And I'll see you guys in the next video.